Welcome to the Events Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Taylor, and each week I talk with event professionals and entrepreneurs about how they plan, promote, and run their events. We help you build your events empire by growing your business using live events. Whether you're running community meetups or conferences, trade shows, and other events, we focus on finding actionable tips that you can use straight away. We want you to get more attendees, produce epic events, make more money, and most importantly, to do it all with no stress. This podcast is sponsored by EventsFrame. Check it out over at eventsframe.com. Make the switch from Eventbrite today to our amazing ticketing and registration system with no ticket fees. Most ticketing systems charge you a minimum of 3% of the ticket price, but we just have a flat low fee with no ticket fees and no restrictions. There's literally no system out there that is cheaper than EventsFrame. It's also super easy to use and you can embed your tickets in your website or you can use our own website builder, which is really simple. We have amazing options to apply all kinds of discounts on all the features you'd expect from a much more expensive system like QR code check-in. Go to eventsframe.com, that's E-V-E-N-T-S, F-R-A-M-E.com for a free, no-risk, one-month trial. Hello and welcome to the Events Podcast. I'm Dan Taylor. Today I'm talking with Regina Hill. I hope I'm pronouncing that right because there's a D before the G, but Red Regina, as far as I can tell, Hill. Uh, she's yes. from oh, fantastic! She's from Indiana. Uh, runs Regina Hill Consulting, um, and she runs a lot of events and consulting uh, related to diversity, which is an interesting topic and obviously more and more discussed at the moment. So, Regina, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Cool. Regina, just to start off, like, could you give us a bit of overview of your background? Like, like, what did you do? Did you start off working for someone else or, go, or did you start off always running your own practice? Like, what's your kind of background that led you to, to running your own consulting uh, operation? So I work at a small liberal arts Christian college in the Midwest. Right. And my title is Director for Diversity and Inclusion, and I am the founding director. Um, so this office was created for me and I was given the charge just to create the vision, run with it and and measure the success in it. And so over, um, over the course of the first two years of doing that, I began to do some diversity training on my campus and other organizations began to hear about the work that we were doing on our campus through diversity, equity, and inclusion, and wanted me to come into their organizations and train their leaders. Got it. Um, and so I just, this started off with me just getting a phone call saying, hey, we heard you're doing these trainings at your campus. Can you come into our organization? Can you come into our business? And so it started off that way. And a couple of people kind of nudged me along the way and said, hey, you should start your own consulting firm. And I thought, uh, I'm okay. Like, this is good. You know, I'm I'm working full time. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. And then I'm also a full time doctoral student. So I thought, when will I have time to run a business? And it wasn't until um, actually my last course in my doctoral program, my professor was also a consultant in higher ed. And she said, you know what, Regina, you have a gift. You have to you have to launch this. So she created a special assignment for me that within that assignment, I had to create and launch my own consulting with her help along the way as guided me. And so I did that. I, I've been doing the work, but I just finally launched it because she gave me the push to do it. And since then, I've just been able to train um, other thought leaders in the area of diversity, um, C-suite executives, um, boards of organizations. And it's been a lot of fun just to go around and share this message. So I, I guess you still have your job at the university and then you do this like in, in the time you're not working there. Is that how it works out right now then? Yes. Cool. That, that, that's great. I mean, it gives, I mean, that's a great way to start any kind of business if you've got obviously there's the job which you enjoy and it, and it gives you a stable income it's it's a great if, if you can do that i always say to people it's a great way to start rather than just if you don't have to jump straight into going full-time on an entrepreneurial route that's a better way to do it you know yeah and i like that i'm still a practitioner so as i'm going out consulting telling people what works and what doesn't work i'm still able to try and test it out too now what like what does that actually mean in terms of uh, the university like diversity like what I mean obviously you're in the US obviously a lot of listeners are there a lot of broad like what what does that like mean in that context what sort of things are you talking about 
Yeah, so within a university setting, some of the things that we focus on is enrollment. When you look at the number of or the percentage of students of color that are coming to college campuses, it is increasing um, rapidly. And the we also look at first generation college students. Um, we also look at women. So when you look at those demographics, you want to look at the university and say, are we ready and equipped not only to recruit them, but also to retain them as students once they get here? And then what should we look like as an institution? Um, it's said that you should, your institution should reflect your demographic that you're bringing in. So who's in leadership? Who are our students seeing? Are they seeing women in leadership? Are they seeing people of color in the leadership roles and on the cabinet? Um, not only that, but um, what about your professors? Are they creating an inclusive campus environment or classroom so that all of these students feel comfortable in the classroom and not feel discriminated against? So these are some of the things that I work on here and some of the things that we talk about in the higher ed context of what diversity, equity, and inclusion looks like. Right. It's, it's interesting to me because... I mean, I grew, I grew up in days of free edu free university education in England, you know, so I actually got paid to go. I mean, it's kind of crazy for Americans to believe, but I got paid to go to university. It was free, like no fees. Plus, I got a living allowance from the government of like $3,000 a year, you know, and um, that would it's kind of weird. Like, plus, I, I, so I joined, I was in the Navy unit at university. I got paid to do that. I worked in a bar. I, I delivered pizza. I, I had loads of money at university, you know, I mean, I worked hard. Like, I was I worked six, seven days a week as well as studying. But, like, mm -hmm. the thing, I, th I just seem to think that, I and mean, this is just separate from diversity. This is a whole bigger topic, but it just seems to me yeah. like the, U, the U.S. system is broken and it's because because of the debt the students are leaving with, like yeah. regardless of like you know what you know. If let's say, presuming they don't come from a wealthy family, and they've got to pay it back themselves. Like I just don't know how how it stacks up if you're going to leave like fifty thousand dollars in debt or whatever. Sometimes more, I guess. You know, it it's, yeah. it's, it just seems really like the system can't keep going like that. I don't know what you think. Yeah, the, I would definitely say the system is broken. And if higher institutions don't get ahead of it, um, we'll start to see more institutions coming up with innovative ways to recruit students and then or also closing. Um, we're seeing across the country that there is a decline in the number of students that are going to college. And one of the reasons is because it's so expensive. Yeah. And every year it is increasing more and more. And then every year institutions are trying to figure out we it's called the discount rate, how much they can discount um, the the price of the actual sticker price of what we're saying is going to cost for a student to come here. And so a lot of institutions are facing now a decline in students and having to cut budgets. And when you cut budgets, a lot of times that means you're cutting student services, you're cutting employees. And so, um, and I believe that's another reason why if you follow the presidential campaign, a lot of the Democrats in the U.S. right now, some of them are talking about student loan forgiveness or student loan repayment plans, just a better way to equip students so after they graduate, they don't have so much debt um, when they leave and then that they can afford it. And also, if you look at the universities, they've, inc they've generally increased the tuition above the rate of inflation as well. And, and, and you know, you just got to look, especially the big universities, these crazy huge campuses they're building. And, and it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, it just it seems to me that, I mean, I, I think good university is a great experience. I had, I had an amazing time. I've still got my best friends are still from university, you know. So I think it's mm -hmm. an amazing thing anyone should do if they get the chance. But like, it's a if you're going to leave so in debt that you may never get out of it, I think it's, I don't know if that's worth it. You know, that's, that's the thing I, the way I see it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of high school students are challenged with that. Uh, do, do I go to a community college, which is a lot cheaper, some programs that you can graduate high school with an associate's degree to kind of offset some of that cost. Yeah. So we're, we're facing so many different challenges now within our higher ed system when it comes to the cost of attendance because a lot of people are really thinking, is it worth it? And then we live in a social media phase where it looks like on social media, people are getting rich quick. Yeah. And so a lot of students don't want to take the four years to get trained or to get education that they're trying to be entrepreneurs just right out the gate. Just to step in here quickly to mention our sponsor, Events Frame, a project I'm co-founder of. And I want to mention our integrations, which we believe are the best available. Firstly, payment integrations. You can connect any payment gateway, such as Stripe, 
PayPal, on Braintree, or even bank account or take cash. You can connect everything to EventsFrame. We also have the best marketing integrations out there with every email marketing system, including MailChimp, Zapier, Infusionsoft, Aweber, Drip. And we've got deep integrations with all the social media platforms like Facebook, Google, and Twitter. We've got thousands of events live on EventsFrame right now, ranging from small community meetups to huge trade shows and conferences. Check it out over at eventsframe.com. That's E-V-E-N-T-S-F-R-A-M-E.com. And now, back to the interview. Usually the people genuinely getting rich are not the ones posting on social media. That's like the... But, I mean, <laughs> right. but the thing is like, yeah, I, I, yeah, it's, 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 to me the whole thing is, I mean, the community college thing is, I don't know why anyone, everyone isn't doing that because a lot of states, you, you know, if you do two years in a community college, they have to accept you into third year, you know, you can just do it cheaply and then just jump in. But I guess people want the status of going to like a, you know, a regular college from, from beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, so well, in terms you, of your event, you those credits, once you transfer those credits and you graduate with a bachelor's degree, yeah. What what's on your bachelor's degree is this, the institution that you graduate from. Exactly, yeah. It's just, it doesn't even um, don't even know. But yeah, no, this is all fascinating. The um, the diversity thing as well. It it, it I, I guess it's um, increasingly like people are much more aware of it. And and the U.S. I guess you know just because of its history has got a very specific sort of diversity. I, I guess. I guess African Americans are the biggest minority. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong at where you are. Is is, is that the case? Well, um, in the U.S., the fastest growing population right now is our Hispanic and Latino right. population. That's the fastest growing um, right now, and so we're projected by 2025 to be a minority majority um, country, meaning there's more people of color than our white. Um, right. Our white counterparts. Interesting. So, so what? Yeah. Um, so, in terms of a training, like, cause I, obviously you've got an event live right now, like, and I'm curious because obviously it's the events podcast. We talk about running events. Like, where where mm-hmm. did this one come about? Is, is this the first one you've run yourself, or have you run other events outside the university? Yeah. So this is actually my first one. I'm used to organizations calling me in to come in and to their organizations and do trainings. Yep. This time I'm casting the net and I'm saying I'm going to do this for my region because I love my region. I love my community. I want to see and have a greater impact in it. So this time I'm casting my net saying I'm going to host this event. Come and learn um, at a very discounted rate what I charge to go into organizations to give them this model that I'm going to be presenting. Yeah. And look, where, people can find this on ReginaHillConsulting.org. Is that right? The, the, the... Yes. Yes, and and tell us a bit of, it, sorry, Fortis. Regina. No, they can find me at reginahillconsulting.org and click registration to click um, to register for the event. Yeah, and it's called Driving Diversity and Organizational Change. Now, how yes. are you, I'm very curious, like how are you promoting this? Uh, I see you've got a co-sponsor. Are they helping you promote it or how, how are you actually going about Because obviously promotion, how to get people to your event is is probably the hardest thing. Like how are you going about it? Yeah, so I made some connections along the way of doing this work. So I reached out to a lot of the organizations that I've already um, had contracts with. Um, I reached out to, I sat, I sit on several boards that have to do with diversity. Yep. And a lot of those um a lot of those board members on the board with me are CEOs of companies and they sit on other boards too. And so I sent them, I call it a media kit um, with all the information and just a short email explaining um, what it is that they could just simply just forward to other CEOs um, within their, within their, um, my mind's drawing a blank network, within the their network. sphere of influence. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah. Sphere influence. Um, and then also I'm, I am just like being bold. I'm on LinkedIn, looking up people, um, looking up major organizations in this area, looking up their HR directors, their diversity people and sending it out to them through email. I'm getting ready to send out some postcards too. And so I rely heavily on um, my network of of friends and allies. That, that's a good point them. what you make because you know I've run I, I have a company apps events as well. You know, in addition to events frame, and we run Google, you know we do Google training all around the world. And and what you just said about mm-hmm. like chasing people down, like people underestimate the hustle side of things. People like I mean everybody wants you know obviously in an ideal world you could set up a great marketing campaign and a Facebook page and people would come to you. But the reality is, 
if you look at almost anyone running events, you've got to just hustle, chase people down on Facebook, call, call people, you know, email them and then call yeah. them. And, and, and I, 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 I can see that's why you're doing it because that's, that's really the, the way, especially for your first event, you know, to really get the word out. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a hustle. I got a great team around me to, to help um, get this going. So it's been a hustle. And are you doing anything else apart from LinkedIn and, and, and obviously you're going to your network and sending them, you said you were printing some postcards. Is that right as well? Yeah. So, um, I actually, it's in my inbox to approve now some postcards that I'm going to send out, um, to businesses and organizations to, to their HR departments right. to further the word out. Great. And in terms of logistics, I see you're hosting your event at a, in a holiday inn. Like, is there a reason, like, cause obviously, you know, you, you've got access to a university, you maybe could get free or cheap uh, or, you know, or, or some other community center. Is there a reason you've, you've chosen the hotel? Is that to get like a more corporate environment for the, for the event? Yeah, a more corporate environment. We're also going to serve lunch um, yeah. as a part of the registration also. And then to kind of set myself apart from Bethel. A lot of people um, in the area know me because of my institution that I work at. Yep. And so instead of having it at my institution, I thought, let's get off site where we can have more of a corporate feel. You know, I, I walked through this process and thought aesthetically, what do I want it to look like? How do I want to set the tone? Um, what are the first things that I want people to see when they walk in? And so I thought it was just best to have it at a holiday in at the conference center, um, which is a, a very nice environment. Sure. Also. And and how are you like in terms of presenting? Are, are you? I'm always curious how people run their workshops and things. Are you are you running it just yourself, or do you have different speakers, or are you focusing on yourself for this one? So I have um, an an associate consultant, and we're going to do this together. Um, and I like interactive um, workshops. I don't like being lectured to. Sure. Um, but I'm actually getting the people up and coming up with a plan. Um, writing things down as a team so that it's more interactive so they can feel like they left a workshop and it was productive that they just weren't talked at but they actually have a plan in place that they can execute once they return to their organizations yeah definitely it's all about for me i just like i like group activities you know get people break out anything to break out get people talking to each other get people right break out into groups of 10 all the people you know you do this exercise get people talking i i love that kind of thing for running these events yeah what about, um, what's your plan for the future? You're running this event. Obviously, um, are, are you looking to make this like a regular event or take it on the road or, or like scale it? Or, 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 do you have any, any kind of like plans if this goes well, what to do next? Yeah, so my goal, I have a couple of goals with this. I'm hoping to pick up new, um, new contracts with new organizations um, as a part of the different services that are offered through my consulting firm. Sure. I'm also going to do as a follow-up within 90 days because we're going to give them a 90-day plan to go back to their organization and, and just try this out. So we're going to do a free webinar for those people who attend it in 90 days to talk about some of the wins and successes and some of the resistance that they may have faced up against yep. and kind of talk them through through that for the next 90 days so they can continue to see progress. But then also in October, I'm going to do a three-week series focused on the three topics are strategies for hiring diverse personnel. The second one is how to overcome implicit bias in the workplace. And then the last one is creating a culture of inclusion. So I'm going to do a three-week series uh, for HR professionals and anyone else who's interested in diversity, equity, and inclusion in October. And it's it's kind of like a lunch and learn. They'll also have lunch too during the series. Fantastic. Well, look, Regina, we're, we're just about up to, to the time. That's been been super interesting. Obviously, we'll put links to your website uh, and social media accounts. Is there anything else, any other website or anything else you want to promote? No, just, um, well... Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram at Regina Hill Consulting, also on Facebook, Regina Hill Consulting, and then the webpage, reginahillconsulting.org. Don't forget the D in Regina. <laughs> That's very confusing to me. <laughs> cool. It's Regina, it's been story. a pleasure to talk yeah. to you, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dan. Do you want to sell more tickets to your amazing events? Events Frame Event Ticketing has been built to minimize the amount of time it takes to buy a ticket. Result? You sell more tickets. Check out eventsframe.com 